Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down quite a large area that is under the risk for at least a low end threat for severe weather today and tomorrow we'll also be discussing the potential for a major hurricane in the next few days in the Atlantic Ocean and it could impact some land including the Lesser Antilles perhaps the Bahamas and we're gonna have to watch this closely in the United States I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's Let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today and we'll first begin with the northern plains and this is where our low pressure system is currently located which is going to bring the risk for some severe weather later today across parts of the Midwest and as well as back through the Mississippi Valley it's a pretty large area that we're watching for it extends all the way back through Texas so it's a pretty large risk overall in terms of severe weather we'll talk about more of the specific details in terms of timing and as well as the threats later in this forecast so make sure you stay tuned but as of right now there's not a whole lot of storms out there right now but that will change as we go into the afternoon and evening hours and we'll eventually see more showers and storms with all modes of severe weather being possible west coast of the united states had a lot of rain over the past few days now it is drying out over back in california we are starting to warm up now with that being said death valley will not be the warmest place on earth today instead it'll be wichita falls texas over here in parts of northern texas that area is expected to hit 108 degrees today so it'll be very hot there otherwise on the east coast we're not really looking at a whole lot so it's overall fairly quiet in the United States. The main concern for today, tomorrow, and as well as on Friday will be this system here that is moving off to the east that will pose a threat for severe weather. So again, we'll talk about more on this in just a few minutes. Now, the Atlantic tropics are heating up pretty quickly right now. We are only about a week away from the peak of hurricane season, which is on September 10th. And as of right now, we have a new tropical depression that could become a category four, maybe even close to a category five hurricane over the next few days. And you might be thinking, wow, that's a really hot take. It's not really with how hot it is in the Atlantic Ocean right now that's really warm in terms of ocean temperatures the wind shear is at a very minimal stage right now especially for tropical depression 13 which will be moving off to the west northwest taking a track that'll be approaching the lesser Antilles and perhaps as well as the Bahamas down the road notice the system behind this that is right now not an impact in the United States but it is gonna be something to watch out for in the Atlantic Ocean it might just be a fish storm but this is another area of development that has a high chance of developing over the next five days and notice back up in the northeast Atlantic Ocean we could even see a brief tropical storm form again that could even be going toward areas in Europe so that'll be kind of interesting up that direction but here's the current track here on tropical depression 13 this is the first time ever that it's we've ever seen a tropical depression forecasted to become a category 4 hurricane in the span of five days and this is unbelievable so notice this by Sunday morning this will be likely a category 4 hurricane sustained winds are forecasted to be at 140 miles per hour again unbelievable stuff there notice the cone of uncertainty though it is pretty large and as of right now it is not expected to impact the United States directly but there is always the potential this could change down the road notice how this is only five days out obviously seven ten days from now we could be watching this being closer to the United States but again there's a lot of uncertainty down the road of where this goes but the bare minimum those in the lesser Antilles near Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic and Haiti need to be on alert for this especially those in the lesser Antilles because there will definitely be some storm surge out of this high winds and that sort of thing definitely gonna be an impact if this gets anywhere close to those areas notice all the different computer models here these are all the ensembles not really any of them are bringing it toward the united states there's only maybe one or two but notice the time frame on this this is 240 hours out and you guys know how often these things change 240 hours out there's a lot of people posting graphics online showing the track going right toward the united states i'll tell you right now it's an extremely low chance right now that that actually does happen the more likely chance of this actually impacting the united states would be as this moves off to the north perhaps going toward new england that would be the better chance of this impacting the united states i don't think this is going to go toward florida and i don't really think this is going to impact the carolinas but there's always that chance so stay tuned it's a low 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 chance but it's always a possibility especially since we're talking about stuff that is seven days out so stay tuned we'll keep posted with the latest no hype forecast here on the max velocity channel just for reference this is the european model over the next several days again this would be tropical oppression 13 being that major hurricane around saturday morning eventually by sunday into monday notice how this kind of sits down there just east of the bahamas this kind of gives me those vibes of what we saw with hurricane dorian but it's further to the east overall notice by tuesday into wednesday it starts racing off to the north and the reason why we would see this direction will be because of the bermuda high and as well as the jet stream those are going to be two features that we have to watch for very closely over the next several days it'll give us a better idea of how this 
this system ex exactly interacts with those two features because that is basically how it's going to be steered either at the sea or perhaps straight to the north toward maybe New England. All right, let's talk more about the stuff that's happening closer to home. And we're going to begin with the jet stream. This is going to be controlling the weather pattern here of the United States for the next several days. And as of right now, we do have a trough that's located in parts of the northern plains, another one right behind it. And this will increase the risk for severe weather over the next several days. Notice by Thursday and Friday, those both enter into areas like the Midwest. So again, severe weather will be on the uptick for the next few days across parts of the Midwest and eventually into the Northeast. Eventually by Thursday night, notice this right here. That is a trough. It's actually going to become a bit more negatively tilted. So we'll have a little bit more of a pull of moisture, but it's not going to be much because the upper level winds are very weak here. It's not an overly impressive system. It's more of a mid-latitude sort of storm. Eventually, as we go into Saturday and into Sunday, we're not really going to see a whole lot in the United States. But by next week, we're going to have a jet stream dip. And as this moves down to the south and southeast, a cold front will come along with it. And those back down in parts of the southern plains, even the Mississippi Valley, will see a cool down out of this. It will be more a brief, I'd say, sort of cool down. But that will start to be a bit of more of a transition toward fall. So some good news there if you're looking forward to some cooler weather. Here are the temperature anomalies for the next several days. Again, above average temperatures will continue through a large chunk of this week and weekend. Once we go into next week, that cool down will start to arrive to the United States. Notice this area here that is all going to be cooler than average temperature. So good news there. Again, if you're looking forward to some cooler weather. But overall, that's going to last a few days, probably mid to late week of next week. And then after that, it might start to warm back up again. Now let's talk more about this large, severe weather potential for today. It's a large area, but overall, the risk isn't super high today. But we are watching a couple areas in particular for more of an increased risk for severe weather, one of which will be across parts of the upper Midwest and another of which will be back down toward Mississippi and as well as Oklahoma. Main concerns for today are damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour. That'll be a scattered threat. In terms of large hail, the main concern will be back up in parts of the upper Midwest. Tornado risk does exist today. We'll have a couple tornadoes most likely later today across parts of Minnesota and as well as Wisconsin and perhaps the upper Michigan Peninsula will be in the risk for that. But overall, again, the threat of tornadoes is low, but you should have a tornado action plan in place just in case. Here's about 6 o'clock this evening. Notice these storms firing up pretty quickly, 5 to 6 o'clock. These are going to be the storms that we're watching out for. Overall, there's not really any organized area of storms that we're watching in particular, but this will be the most organized area, producing that threat for scattered damaging winds, perhaps an isolated tornado, especially out of those northern storms. Eventually, as we go into the evening hours, these storms move to the east. Overnight, they'll weaken out, and then we'll be watching for more storm activity as we go into tomorrow morning. Notice Michigan will be watching for some isolated severe weather tomorrow during the late morning, afternoon, perhaps a couple storms during the evening hours. Damaging winds is, again, the main concern there. As we go into wacky weather Wednesday, we are looking at a pretty large risk of severe weather from Michigan all the way back through Arkansas. Uh, again, main concern, damaging winds. It's a very elongated area. It's actually not very large in terms of its width, but it is still a pretty decent area in terms of its size. Once we go into tomorrow, again, we'll be watching for storms during the morning hours. That's our greater concern when it comes to damaging winds would be this area here during the morning hours for those in areas like Illinois and as well as back through Kentucky. Eventually by the morning, afternoon, this around lunchtime, a couple storms going closer to Tennessee. And by the evening hours, another small little band of storms might develop around six o'clock or so. And those might produce some damaging winds as well. But again, that's the main concern. I don't think there'll be much of a trade risk tomorrow. And then as we go into tossing trampolines on teletrees Thursday, our next two risks of severe weather will be in the northeast and as well as parts of the southern plains. And we'll be talking about more on this in our next forecast. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.